the Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to carrylutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro trainings on financial survival. 1490 WGCH, this is Carrie Lutz, and you're listening to the Financial Survival Network which is brought to you by Miles Franklin. They've been in business selling gold and silver for over 20 years. And I'm a customer because when you buy, they ship. For more information, find them on the web at milesfranklin.com or give them a call at 800-822-8080 and get a free quote. There's something afoot. Something going on in Europe, something going on in Asia. Just today, the Hong Kong Exchange purchased the London Metals Exchange for several billion dollars, according to what I've heard, a vastly inflated price. But something's up. And when there's something afoot, when we need news stories deconstructed, we go to Chris Twain, Silver Shield, don't dash tread dash on dot me, because <laughs> He is the master deconstructor. <laughs> hey, Chris, it's been a couple of weeks, man. How are you? Very good, Carrie. How are you? All right. So no sooner do I send you the story and I look at my inbox and there's a video. And of course, I am uh, busy interviewing people and I can't look at it. So yeah. I apologize for that because I That's usually right. don't like to talk about stuff I haven't looked at. But <laughs> since I inspired it, I feel like I got to write. Yeah, you get the first crack at it. Yeah, so, uh, you know, basically you sent me the, the link this morning. I think it was a New York Times piece, Reuters. It's all over the place um, that the uh, Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing is buying, hasn't bought. They still have to get approval and all that other stuff, but it looks like they're going to do it. Um, the London Metals Exchange, and I think it's for $2.1 billion, which is a, um, you know, in the article, they said that that was a, a pretty inflated premium. And, uh, you know, that the Chinese essentially muscled out a lot of other bigger exchanges, um, at least on the world market, uh, the Intercontinental Exchange, uh, NYSE, Euronext and uh, CME Group, who we know owns the COMEX. Um, So, you know, here's this Chinese, uh, uh, you know, enterprise that is buying one of the crown jewels of the Anglo-American empire, um, you know, their, their metals exchange. And uh, man, the, the, when I just read the headline, I'm like, OK, um, you know, this has got to do something for silver and gold. But it's not the LME is not a is not the LBMA, which is the London Bullion Market Association. So this isn't a gold and silver thing, but this is uh, very big on the on the on the chessboard. And I wanted to break it down for people. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a branding issue because they tried page, which is the Pacific Pan Asian gold exchange and that got blown out of the water by the empire by the elites so now they're buying the lme which is is the lesser known metals exchange the less prestigious metals exchange in london so there's obviously some plan here to expand and improve the asian gold exchange brand right yeah, I and mean, again, Carrie, this is, doesn't have to do gold and silver. The the LME mainly handles like aluminum, uh, coal, yeah, you know, all the industrial stuff. So this is not the LBMA, um, which was my first initial response because I saw that and I'm like, oh my god, this is huge. Um, so the the more I looked at it, and the other clarification I put in my video on uh, my Truth Never Told YouTube channel is that the Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing is not the Hong Kong Mercantile Exchange, which is the um, you know the precious metals uh, you know exchange out there in China that is partnered with the Rothschilds. Um, so you know normally most of the people in our little space, as soon as you mention Rothschilds, they go, oh, this is conspiracy and. You know, uh, you know, here comes the anti-Semite type stuff. The Rothschilds are the most powerful banking family of all time. Yeah. Uh, they've transferred their wealth down seven generations, which is a feat in itself. They own the world's central banks and they're major players. And they're, they're the ones that back up the Anglo-American empire. Um, so in my little research for this, I saw that 
uh, the Hong Kong Mercantile Exchange, when that came on the market, all the gold and silver guys were like, oh, this is great. China's, you know, making their own gold and silver market. But then I come to find out, you know, Nathaniel Rothschild is one of the founding members of it. You know, really, are they are they really going to, uh, you know, do that? Um, so when I went down this road again, OK, I go, OK, it's not the Hong Kong Mercantile Exchange with Nathaniel Rothschild. It's not uh, the LBMA. It's a total separate Chinese entity going after the industrial metals thing. But at the bottom of the article, guess who negotiated and facilitated the selling of the deal? The Rothschilds. Yeah, I was going to say, if there's an exchange for sale, they're knee deep in it. And so so this isn't going to further the uh, the cause or the purpose of a freely traded metals exchange is the no I, I mean it is transferring more control over to the Chinese and you know in my big picture you know I tend to think all over the place um, and, I, and I connect all these random things you know I think back to when George Soros did a, that interview for Financial Times talking about how they have to get China uh, into this new world order. And he used the word new world order. Man, he mm -hmm. stuttered over it. And I put it in the video. <laughs> he goes, there, this new, 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 new world order. Like he did not want to say it, but he did. The um, NWO. Yeah, anything <laughs> but what I want to say. Uh, but he couldn't. But he, he couldn't he, come he, up with a synonym that didn't mean anything. Couldn't come up with anything else. <laughs> but in, in the, uh, the, the video clip that I put in there, um, he basically says that the Chinese are frustrating the Rothschilds because Soros is not, you know, this, you know, anybody who's in the, the politics goes, oh, Obama works for Soros. Soros is the ultimate bad guy. Soros is a is a front man for the Rothschilds. He, he's 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 a he's a you know, paradigm puppet. He's not power in itself. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in this uh, interview with the Financial Times, which again, another Rothschild owned company, um, he mentions their frustration with China not playing along with this new world order and that the Chinese don't own uh, a stake in it. You know, they're playing along, but they don't own a stake in it, much like the United States and the Anglo Americans. And he says it's imperative for us to, for them to buy in to this paradigm. Well, I put the buy in and I put up this London Metals Exchange. That's exactly what they're doing. The Rothschilds are trying to ingratiate themselves with this new growing power. And they're giving and giving and giving, you know, opening up the Hong Kong Metals uh, Mercantile Exchange, uh, you know, handing them the LME on, on a plate. Um, they're giving and giving because they're trying to ingratiate themselves because they know China is the next century. And if they don't, you know, work their way in there. The thing that's going against the, the Rothschilds are their history. Mm -hmm. They've destroyed China. They were behind the opium wars. Sure. Uh, you, know, the, the, you know, the Rothschilds funded England. England ruled the world. England did two, you know, 20-year war opium wars against China, which ripped apart that nation, which impoverished it, which gave rise to Mao. Uh, and, and to me, I think that the Chinese are taking and taking and taking whatever the Rothschilds give them. But at the end of the day, they're going to get the uh, 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 carpet yanked out from underneath them. Yeah, I agree with you. But I think uh, China is on knife's edge, too. Their political system is is really from yesteryear because the people got too much money there. Their wealth is building so quickly. And what do people do, societies do, that acquire wealth relatively quickly? Go to Japan. They start traveling the world. They start, uh, you know, wanting the finer things in life. And you're locked in a thing where your government is really stealing it faster than you can make it which is mm -hmm. much what's happening in the United States. Sure. The kleptocracy is stealing it faster than, than any of us can make it, which is why we need to be off the grid. But in China, it's being off the grid has been a way of life since the counter revolution, which is what they call the cultural <laughs> revolution there. Yeah. And so the meantime, the Chinese government is playing this game with the U S and the rest of the world, you know, in its search for dominance and primacy, but the people are playing this game with their leaders at the same time. And, you know, this whole nation state thing, you know, Doug Casey always talks about, we're coming to the end of the nation state. And I don't necessarily agree with that because we need something to run stuff. You know, somebody has got to get those damn trains to run on time. And I don't think that uh, a little co-op in, uh, you know, in Nanking can get it doing it. But on the other hand, the ability to 
make the rules for all of us to follow, that's what's coming to an end. That aspect of the nation state of the state being effectively uh, primate, you know, primacy of the state and you being a, a subject, mm -hmm. you know, a yeah. vassal. And yeah. that's what's going to change here. Well, and, and that's where I'm going with the Silver Bullet and Silver Shield series. This is five hour long series talking about why you should be selling everything and buying silver. But I'm trying to provide the 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 historical, the religious, the geographical, the the financial, all these different perspectives. And, and now I'm at the point where, you know, where we're going. Um, so while we have this Anglo-American empire, which is, you know, epitomized by the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and 300 years of Western dominance, um, the rise of this anti-hegemon, as I've dubbed them, uh, of China, Russia, India, Brazil, uh, Iran, Venezuela, all these nations that don't benefit from the current world order uh, grouping together. Um, that's the new Hegelian dialectic that I think that mm -hmm. the elite are going to play. Um, you know, the, the kleptocracy in, in China yeah. and Russia are no better than ours. Um, and I don't think that, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, they're pitting against each other. But the reality is they're one of the same problem. Um, yeah. At the end of my series, I'm going to talk about the uh, more powerful or potentially more powerful power of an awakened humanity that gets yeah. the game. You know, and because mm -hmm. I tell you what, as powerful as the Rothschilds and Rockefellers are, as powerful as the Chinese communist ruling power, they are completely weak as soon as humanity wakes up and says, this is all the Wizard of Oz. They're just men behind the curtains. This is a game. I just need to walk away from it. Take my assets, my my intelligence and, and walk away from toxic thoughts, toxic people, toxic relationship, toxic jobs, toxic investments, toxic state and just walk away. Because these parasitical uh, psychopaths that are at the top of all these hierarchical power structures, whether it's, you know, London, Washington, Beijing, Moscow, they're useless. They're powerless without our active or willing participation in supporting them. And I yeah. think that that is where humanity is going to go. As much as they would like to have, you know, World War Three and maybe have China, you know, going against the United States and let's blow up the whole world and let's redo it just like we did in World War Two. I don't think humanity is mm. going to say, you know what, China's not our enemy any more than, you know, Iran or Iraq or Libya. Or they, Washington. Just, yeah, <laughs> Washington or Albany we, or we Columbus. Have much more common. I have. I, you and I have much more in common with the average shop owner in Tehran, Baghdad, and Beijing than we do with any of these psychopaths that are pushing for war, stealing our wealth, uh, you know, rigging the game, uh, the kleptocracy, the, the the all the stuff that they're doing. You know, most people just want to be left alone. You nailed it. That's what it is, and that's why statism is is bankrupt. I mean, every state, every sovereign state in the world now is bankrupt and i don't care where they are asia whatever they might have less debt in australia but they're really one step away from bankruptcy and once people understand that uh, they've been in a codependent relationship that they didn't an need abusive to be, relationship yeah. An then, abusive relationship. Yeah. That's what you have with the toxic people in your life, the, your job that mm -hmm. you hate, uh, the government that's taken from you, the, the, all this stuff. And you know what? It's We're responsible. We're the ones that are signing the debts. We're the ones that are voting for these monkeys that mm -hmm. enslave us. We're the ones that uh, volunteer for the war and, and praise our soldiers overseas. We need to bring them home. We need peace. Yeah. We need to you know live within our means. And to me, I keep telling it, I keep hammering it home, buying silver is not you know some get-rich quick scheme it is a way of changing the balance of power mm -hmm. and if, when people realize that if by uh taking their wealth outside the paradigm and putting it into something physical and tangible that they can't be taken from um the world will change absolutely you know i'm totally with you on that i've seen it firsthand you know every now and then i get some emails from people saying well that's easy for you to say you've got money or you did it already and my answer is like what you said go through all the junk that you own. I guarantee you, you've got several thousand dollars worth of stuff that you no longer use that is worthless to you that you could sell on eBay. You know, you could be selling stuff. You could be doing a part-time job service, whatever it takes to make it and start doing some uh, investing in silver. It just makes total sense yeah i mean and, I, i've told this story carrie a yeah. hundred times i have uh, one of my members 
is a pizza delivery guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three kids, dog, wife. He's a pizza delivery guy. And you know what he does every day? He goes out and buys a mercury dime from his tips. Two dollars, two dollars and fifty cents. You buy a tenth of an ounce of silver. Okay. And you do that on a consistent Mm -hmm. basis. And I don't care how poor you are. That is an achievable thing. And I'll tell you what, folks, when this debt paradigm collapses, that one mercury dime, that tenth of an ounce of silver is the equivalent of 12 hours of hard human labor in an environment that doesn't have unlimited credit and unlimited energy, which is the environment that we're going to have when this dollar paradigm collapses. So if you, if you, if you buy, geez, a hundred ounces, hey, got one of these here, a yeah, silver eagle, that's 10 days, 10 yeah. days, of hard human labor for $30 folks. Mm-hmm. That's what bucks. it's going for right now. Okay. Yep. What would you, would you work 10 days? For thirty dollars? <laughs> no. Well, that's what you're buying. So yeah. go out there and buy. Don't I don't buy this. You know I don't have money. Baloney. You know mm-hmm. for for two dollars. You know that's a coke at a at a restaurant. Yeah. Oh, you know, exactly. Four bucks a beer. Some of these places are eight bucks a beer. Yeah. Exactly. And I don't know if you got that video that I sent you, but it was a takeoff on Boardwalk Empire. Yeah, it I was big that big thing. slurp Empire, and you know the. Boardwalk Empire starts out with uh, Steve Buscemi at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean in Atlantic City, and all of these bottles start r- washing up of alcohol. And here it's all these big slurp cups start <laughs> yeah. start washing up, and you know and then it's like prohibitions don't work, Nanny Bloomberg. You yeah. know, try personal responsibility, yeah. and you know, just like I said when this thing came out. Now the Board of Health, they, they want to go after shakes. They want to go after popcorn in movie theaters. So if that's not a reason to opt out, I can't find a better one because, yeah. you know, who the hell are they? Yeah. How, how dare they try to tell me what I should be eating? It's that's insanity. Another, uh, that's another funny video I did. And I, again, I, I, uh, I, you send me a lot of funny stuff that inspires me. So I, I continue to uh, appreciate that. But I did a video based off of that called Creeping Fascism. I don't know if you got to see that one, but that was actually pretty funny. I I basically talked about how, um, you know, this is creeping fascism. This is control over your life. It has nothing to do with your health or safety. Mm -hmm. It has everything to do with the indoctrination of the citizens to accept further and further restrictions on their lives. And it's being done in advance of a much bigger social economic problem. Uh, And when this all goes down, New York City will be 1984 RoboCop. You know, Escape from Manhattan, you name your worst dystopian dream movie, it's going to be that. Um, and what, was, that, that uh, what was Kurt Russell's character oh, in Escape Snake, from Manhattan? I think. Snake yeah. Biskill? Ah, I can't remember his name. It was a know. funny name. Yeah. yeah so uh, if you're waiting for uh, Kurt Russell to save you, <laughs> Forget it. You know, he's too happen. busy with Goldie Hawn. Get out, yeah. get out of, get out of, Dodge, <laughs> get out of urban areas. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I don't care where you are, if it's New York or, you know, Atlanta or something, you know, the, I, I've said before, you know, top five places not to be when the dollar collapses, any urban area uh, is going to be bad for multiple reasons. Um, number one, you have a aggressive narcissistic population that uh, is very cutthroat and that's natural in most mm-hmm. urban areas, uh, New York City being the toughest of all of them. Um they are highly dependent on the constant importation of food, energy, and water. Yep. Uh, if there's any economic distress, that could shut down, and all of a sudden you have an in, uninhabitable uh, s- uh, area. Uh, if it happens in the summertime, God help you. <laughs> um, you're surrounded by aggressive, Ooh. narcissistic uh, people who are totally unprepared for a paradigm collapse. Uh, and then you got millions of people in a small amount of area. I mean, folks, don't dance around this. This is going to happen one day. Um, and you know, if you're, if you're there, if you're not prepared, this is, uh, you know, not something to mess around with. Yeah. An agreement there. And Chris, we got to get going now. So don't dash tread dash on dot me. Your YouTube channel is uh truth never told. I think we're up to 3.1 million views now and, uh, just over 14,000 subscribers. We're still growing at a really good click and, uh, you know, I appreciate all the support and, um, uh, you know, we'll keep it going. Hey, absolutely. And to see this interview again or to listen to any of the other ones that Chris and I have done, as well as, God, we're up to hundreds. I don't even know how many <laughs> interviews I've done at this point. I just can't yeah, you're stop. Muscle, man. I'm like, uh, I'm an interview junkie, you know? So next, we got Walter Williams coming up. We got like a lot of great people. Just go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. It's all there. And I'm going to go back and read 
I should say, uh, watch your video and uh, I'll do a little critique on it for this weekend's awesome. triple Lutz. All right, cool. All right. You be well. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye.